Let's get the Jellyfin on a Synology NAS with hardware encoding. Well, let's start by going to jellyfin.org, their official website, jellyfin.org. I started it off on the nice looking part of it because up here it's not a lot. But let's go to documentation, installation, and not Synology. We're going to click on container. That's right, we're going to do this all through container manager. And then we're going to scroll down to the section that says Docker Compose. Go through, cruise through here in the section that says Docker Compose, and I'm just going to copy all of this text. You can click that guy, or you can highlight everything, and copy, and get ready to paste. Now, let's go back to the Synology NAS, and then let's click on ba -ba -ba, Container Manager, which if you don't have, just come over here to Package Center and type in Container Manager, and it'll show up. If it's not showing up for you, that means that Container Manager is not supported for your model of Synology NAS, but maybe Google around and see if others have gotten it to work on your particular Synology model. So in Container Manager, we're going to go to Project, Create, and then for Project Name, let's type in Jellyfin, Path, we're going to have to make a path. So let's make a path for all of our Jellyfin files to live in. So I've got a file station, Docker. You should have a Docker share if you have created, if you've installed uh, Container Manager. It should be here. And then we're going to create a new folder and call it, let's just call it Jellyfin, not Jellyfind. Jellyfin. Jellyfin will work. And then ba -ba -ba, we'll go back to Container Manager and we will set path to Docker Jellyfin. Easy, 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 easy. And then under source, instead of upload a Docker and Compose YAML, we are going to create what is called a Docker Compose .yaml file. It's really just a text file. And in here, we're going to paste all of that stuff that we copied from this block of text right here under using Docker Compose on the Jellyfin, on the official Jellyfin website. So let's go back to the NAS. And we got to make a couple of changes here for things to work. So uh, first I'm going to do where it says user and UID, GID. I'm going to go to the very beginning of that line and put a pound sign or hashtag. So it's not going to actually use that parameter. If you're comfortable using UID and GID, you can try it out. I've just had a couple of issues using it. So that's why I'm actually just running this container as root. So I'm commenting it out under volumes. We have to make a couple changes here. So you see volumes, it looks like a folder path. You're right, it is. They call these bind mounts in Docker. So on the, you'll see that it's a, it's a folder path, colon, folder path. The folder path to the right, that is for Synology, and we don't really have to worry about that, except if you've been watching my videos, guess what? Today's your lucky day. We will get to change some stuff to the right, but for cache and config, we don't have to do that. We just have to change what's to the left. So let's make it a path. It's just looking for a local path, so that can be anywhere. We're just going to keep it in the Jellyfin folder. So let's go into the Jellyfin folder. Let's create a cache folder and create a, ba, 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 a config folder. Make a config folder. I'm going to copy these file paths. You do not have to do this, but I just want to show you something here. So I'm going to copy that config location. So I'm going to go back here. There are two ways of doing this. I can paste the config location and it's there, or I can actually just type in, or I can just put a period in front of there and use that as the config location. And the reason for that is this period is actually just shorthand for wherever I'm at. And this Docker Compose file is going to be in the Jellyfin folder, so that's why we can just use the period. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, I apologize. So we'll do the same for cache, just period, far slash cache, and then it needs a path to media. So this is where you can be a little, um, it's a not stupid way of saying loosey-goosey. You can <clears throat> kind of put whatever you want here. So the first, so it's the same principle as above, right? What's to the left has to be an actual path. And the path to media is gonna be, where is your music? movies or TV folders. So, and you can put in as many of these as you want. So this is more of an example, the two that they have here, but you can add four, five, six, however many numbers there are, I believe you can add. So I only have one, I have movies. So I'm gonna link movies. So let me go to file station. I'll go to my video share, which is where I keep my movies. And then you can see I have a folder called movies. And it has every single movie that I own and that I have purchased in my entire lifetime. So let's just copy that location. I'm going to right click the movies folder, properties, and I'm just going to copy that location. Bounce out of here, back in container manager. So where it says path to media, I'm going to replace that with the path to my movies. Now to the right, it just says far slash media. I'm going to change that to far slash movies. And you can do the same thing with any of your other files. So if you had a TV share, you can just do that and then TV and then forward slash TV. You'll notice at the end of this, it originally had colon RO. So let me just change it back to TV real quick. You can add colon RO to any of these paths at the end, uh, just to the part that's to the right. Don't add it to the part that's on the left. And what that'll do is it stands for read only. So Jellyfin won't be able to make any changes to those folders, if that makes sense. So it won't be able to write anything into those folders and it won't be able to mess with any of your data that you have in there. So 
If you want, you can add that colon RO. I don't know if there's really any advantage or disadvantage to it in the case of Jellyfin. And then down here, I'm gonna comment out. You can, you can actually, you can just delete that whole section because this is, or sorry, I'll come up to the optional where it says optional. We don't need anything that's optional in here. So you could just delete all of that. You could also just comment it out. If you don't know what commenting out is, that's where we're adding this, we're adding this pound sign to the beginning of all these lines. And that just makes it so it's not being used when Docker is running this code. I don't know if this is considered code or not, but this way you can keep it in here in case in the future you decide that maybe you do need to use the extra host variable or environmental variable for something. So I'll leave that up to you. We also need to do we need to make two more additions here. And this is for if you are doing hardware transcoding. So if you want to be able to tra hardware transcode as of January 26, 2024, which is when I think I'm going to upload in this video. First off, under image jellyfin, you need to add colon 10.8.11. There is an issue with jellyfin hardware transcoding in a Synology NAS for versions after this. So that's why I'm going to use 10.8.11 right now. And I'll explain this more at the end of the video. And then we also need to add the hardware encoding devices. So to do this, I'm going to go back to Jellyfin, back to the Jellyfin website, and I'm going to click on Farm, and then Guides, Walkthroughs, and Tutorials. Yes, you are watching a tutorial, but we're going to click on one that's even better than mine. And I'm just going to look for the first one that says Synology, and there should be one called Guide Running Synology Jellyfin on DSM-7 Using Docker Compose. Thank you, Efficient Good 5784. You're doing, you're doing the good work, my friend. I appreciate it. I'm going to scroll down. He's got a section for, look at that. He's got, he's got his Docker Compose YAML file, and he explains what everything here does, which is really nice. But one thing that we need to copy in his Docker Compose YAML file is this section right here called Devices. So I'm going to copy this whole Devices section here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my Synology NAS. I'm going to look for the section that says Volumes, right? And after the last part of Volumes, I'll hit Return and paste in everything that I got from his site. And I'm just going to reformat this a little bit. So I'll click on devices. I need to delete the pound sign so that way it actually works. I need to make sure that devices lines up with volumes and network mode. I'm going to do the same thing for the other guys below him. So get rid of the pound signs. And I also don't need these extra line spacings here. Oh, actually, sorry. Where it says note, I do need to keep that. Or I can just delete. I can delete this note. I don't really need it. It's an important note, though. So now... Jellyfin is going to have access to our iGPU and be able to do hardware transcoding. And this should be all that you need to get things working, except you do have to make a lot of changes in the settings. And I'll go over those in Jellyfin too. So let's click. Actually, sorry, I need to do one thing. I don't have a TV share, so I'm just going to comment that out. So I'm only working with movies. And I, I think I said this before, but to the right, you can name this whatever you want. To the left, to the right. Um, you know, the left, just make sure that that is a volume that is going to where your media is. And to the right, just name it something that's going to make sense. Because when you're in Jellyfin, this is what Jellyfin is going to use for the location. So when it's asking you where your movies are, I'm not going to say volume one video movies. I'm just going to say it's in the movies folder. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, we're going to see in a second and it will make sense. Next, I'm not going to set up a web station and start the project once it is created and I will click done. All right, so Jellyfin is going to pull all the layers and download all the files and extract all the things that it needs to work. All right, and we got exit code zero and a Jellyfin success thing. It, it popped up, but I missed it because I was doing something else. But we're good. So the, the way to access Jellyfin, I'm going to close out of here, is you're going to type in the IP address HTTP, not HTTPS, HTTP colon slash slash, the IP address of your Synology NAS, colon 8096. And if you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, easy way to do it is just come up here to where it says widgets. Make sure that system health is checked on. And there should be a section called LAN 1. So it's probably LAN 1 or 2, or if you have four, it's one, it's one of those. And it's probably the one that starts with 192.168. something something. So in my case, I'm going to go to HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.86.60 colon 8096. And that is a lot to remember. And here we go. We're in Jellyfin. So welcome to Jellyfin. And that it's it. Uh, they summon a wizard that will help you install the rest of it. So we'll click next. Username. I use the name that is on my birth certificate. Volume data 21. Password. I will make a password. I'm going to use the bit word and generator. And then 14 characters. No. Going up to 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boom, now nobody, nobody except for you and me knows this password. Go back to the Jellyfin setup. I'll put that as my password. Next. You don't have to use a password in Jellyfin, actually, if you don't want to, so there's that option. And then here's where we're going to add our media library. So I'll click the plus sign, content type. In my case, I only have movies. Display name, movies. And then for folder, check it out. 
forward slash movies. That's that path that we made. So there we go. And it has every single movie that I've ever purchased and seen in my entire life. Click OK. And we're good. You can make whatever changes in here that you want. I will say chapter images is pretty nice, but it could take up a lot of resources. So I believe the first option will let it do it only at night. Yeah, it runs when videos are discovered and also runs as a nightly scheduled task. So that might be a good option for you as opposed to doing it while it's doing the library scan, scan because that could take a while. I'll click OK, next, and then next, and next, and I'm done, finish. So I will put in my username, volume data 21, and then my secure password that only you and I know. So if someone else finds out, I'll know that you told them. And I'll click sign in, and we're into Jellyfin. So there's two things we want to do. We want to set up hardware transcoding, and then we want to make sure that it works. So let's go over here to the hamburger, and we'll click on dashboard. And then let's go to playback and check it out. Hardware acceleration none. If you want to test this out right now, you could go into your Synology NAS and click on resource monitor and check out how the CPU reacts when you play a movie. It's probably going to be, it's probably not going to be great. And another thing you'll notice is depending on how you're playing a movie, if I were to play my movie right now, it's missing tone mapping. Because I'm playing it on a browser, the browser doesn't play movies very well. The movie's going to look really gray, so that's going to be a case for using transcoding. So I'm going to I'm going to select under hardware acceleration, Intel QuickSync video. And then I've got all these options here. The way that you know which ones to check, you can just Google up uh, Google Wikipedia Intel QSV or QuickSync video. This page should pop up. And if you scroll all the way down here, it'll give you a list of what functions on your specific chip. So in my case, mine is a ba, 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 Intel J3355. If you don't know what chip you have in Synology, you can ba, 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 just go to Control Panel and then click on Info Center and it should say what chip that you have. If you're not running an Intel chip, this will not work. So if you're on an AMD Synology NAS, you don't need hardware transcoding. Hardware transcoding, unfortunately, is not going to work for you. But I can look in here under Intel J3355 and see that my product collection is, oh, sorry, my code name is products formerly Apollo Lake. So I'll go back to the Wikipedia and look at chips, or sorry, I'll see what works under Apollo Lake. And I can see I can use MPEG-2, AVC, VC1, JPEG, uh, VP8. What I cannot use is HEVC 12-bit, but 10-bit works fine. Um, ba, ba, ba. I cannot use AV1 either. So I'll just go back and make those adjustments. So HEVC uh, -E is fine. That's fine. That's fine. Was VP9 fine? VP9, are you okay? Partially accelerated decoding on Linux only? Um, I'm going to check it even though I don't know it's fine. But I know that AV1 is not fine. HEVC 10-bit is fine. VP9 10-bit is fine. All right. And then there's an option here, prefer OS native DXVA or VAPI hardware decoders. In the Jellyfin, I don't know if I can find it right now. I'm going to turn this off because this will actually, I believe hardware acceleration will still work with this checked on, but it takes up a lot more resources for some reason. So I'm going to click that off. And then hardware encoding options, I'm going to enable Intel low power HEVC hardware encoder. I will allow encoding in HEVC format. I am not going to enable VPP tone mapping. I don't think that this is, I don't think this is supported in any version of, in any Synology NASA's out there, but you can just check it on. If the video doesn't play, just come back in here and check it off. But I know that in my case, it does not work. But I do want to enable tone mapping. That's important. And then you should be all set and this should get hardware encoding working. So if I click save, hardware acceleration is on, got it. I can go back to playback. I want to open up. I'm going to open this up in a separate window as well. All right, so I'm going to start playing. It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown right now. And you can see that hardware encoding will work. Or maybe not. Maybe it won't work. Maybe I messed everything up, but we'll see. All right, so this is playing. That loaded up pretty quickly. This is a full 4K Blu-ray rip, so this is it's pretty pretty intensive. If I go to settings, it's playing at 1080p at 10 megabits per second, but I could also bump it up to whatever. I think this is just because I had this at a setting beforehand. So it is transcoding, but how do I confirm that it's transcoding? I'm going to go to dashboard, and then in dashboard, there's a section called logs. Under logs, it should be the first ffmpeg.transcode version that you see. And when you click on that, it should open up a new window, and it clearly states that it's using quick sync video. I have no idea what any of this is saying, but I do know that if I type in stream mapping, it'll give me this section. So this is saying that it is working because stream, the very first stream, I think, is the video stream. It says HEVC QSV and then H264 QSV for quick sync video. So that is a good sign. 
If it says native here and then lib, I think it's lib264 to the right, then that means that quick sync video is not working for you. So just a little heads up, you're gonna have to do some troubleshooting, shooting if it's not working. Shooting, not troubleshooting, shooting. But yeah, there you go. So now you can watch The Great Pumpkin on repeat for the end of eternity. I'm gonna go through, I, I just wanna address a couple things here because it was actually pretty tricky to figure out hardware transcoding. But um, yeah, I, I feel like this is one of the more confusing tutorials that I've done where I had to bounce around a lot, especially away from the official, from official documentation. So Jellyfin, it, they do have documentation for Synology NAS, but it uses the old method of Docker and it, I don't think they have anything on how to use hardware transcoding. If I go into my project, double click Jellyfin, YAML configurations. Um, I'll, so I'll start with this, using 10.8.11. Going through the Jellyfin forms, eventually I found out that um, ba -ba -ba, hardware transcoding doesn't work for tone mapping. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I can find it. I believe the Dread Pirate over here is a, he's either a developer or he works with Jellyfin. He seems very official. But his understanding is that tone mapping is broken on Synology NASA's running 8.12 and later. So somewhere in one of these forum posts, this I would definitely recommend getting on the forums and paying attention to this. He mentions that if... I think if the Synology kernel gets updated, that they would be able to implement this back into the Synology NAS. But until then, I don't think it's going to work on the newer versions. Okay, yeah, and then he mentions here that it only happens when you are tone mapping HDR to SDR. Regular transcoding should work fine. Ba -ba -ba. If you want to deal with the super crappy colors, it will also work. And yeah, so that's basically it. So that's why I recommend using this version, 10... 10.8.11. If you just want to use the latest version now, or you don't need hardware encoding, you can... Oh, I'm going to stop my Jellyfin container so I can edit that a little bit, close out. You could just delete that, and then it's going to download the latest version of Jellyfin. So you can just stop your container and restart it, and it should work. And then another thing I wanted to address is, I did grab... So I grabbed the official Docker Compose file from Jellyfin's website, and not... Ba -ba -ba, let me click through all these guys. This guy's guide that I pointed to, Efficient Good 5784. And the reason I did that is I still like to point people to the official documentation. I still want people to look on the official forums. I just feel like if I'm doing these guides, unless there's no other way around it in some cases, I, I feel like the, the official places are a good place to go to, especially on a place like Jellyfin where the devs will answer questions on the forums. So this guy's guide, you could totally use his Docker Compose. Uh, let me see if I can highlight this. Oh, oh no, I'm scrolling everywhere here. You could use this person's Docker Compose file as well. I did try it out and it seemed to work just fine. And it uses the official Jellyfin image so if I paste that in here, it's going to look pretty... Oh, man, why is there a space between everything? I don't know. Maybe that's another reason I didn't use this. But he's even got a section for the time zone and ports. So there's a little bit of niceness here. You will notice, too, but yeah, the, the only thing with his guide is that I wasn't able to find anything about... What tripped me up was not being able to use hardware encoding properly because in his guide, it uses the latest version of Jellyfin. So you can see here, it's just using the latest. Um, ba -ba -ba, and then he's got instructions for using a specific one, but I don't think it mentions in the guide that... It's a little bit broken on a Synology NAS in, in the later versions. But yeah, also, you know, I, if this person's forum post goes down one day or something like that, at least you've been guided to the official post and you can copy and paste what I have on screen and hopefully that'll work for you. And then, yeah, so that option to prefer OS native DXA, I remember I told you about that option. You should uncheck that because it'll take up a lot of space, but it should be noted, it should still work. And if you have Dolby Vision movies, you might want to keep it on because Dolby Vision support requires that this option be checked. I haven't really messed around with it, but it's just something that you should know about that option. But I feel like CPU usage for me doubled, maybe a little bit more than doubled when I had that option turned on. So that's the reason that I turned it off. But if you want to get Dolby Vision to transcode properly, I guess, you might need that on. And then also here is what the, when you're trying to confirm if hardware encoding is working or not, when you're looking for stream mapping, this is good. So you see the QSV, QSV like I had it before. And then this is what you don't want to see, native and libx264. You can also see this if you just turn off hardware transcoding under the options of Jellyfin. You can then look for this in the logs too. But that is everything that I know about Jellyfin hardware encoding. Hopefully that, was, it, hopefully that could help some of you guys out. Um, there's a lot of information out there on it. I would definitely pay attention to Jellyfin news, their forums, their GitHub, just to see if they're ever able to fix it where you can pull the latest version of Jellyfin 
and be able to still do proper tone mapping on your videos. The other option too is you can look at the Linux server.io version of this. It was, a, it was a lot just to do the official one, so I haven't really played around with the Linux server.io version very much on a Synology NAS, but maybe that'll also work for you. Anyways, good luck to you!